Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Binance is the flavor of the day. So we're going to continue to track Binance as we have done over the last couple of weeks, especially as it heads towards our target after our nice clean entry point. Also going to check out Uniswap that also smashes through to a new all time high. Plus I've got a new ecosystem. It's not new overall, but it looks like it has the potential to rival Binance and it's nowhere near Binance's market cap. We got there in the end. All right, so that's what we've got uh, coming up in today's video, plus some cryptocurrency news. You love the sound of that. You love cryptocurrency. Let me know. Hit the like button down below. Smash it over 2,000 likes. Come on, you've been pretty poor the last couple of weeks. Even the scammers are doing better than you guys in the comments. Get your asses down there after the video. Let us know your thoughts on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Bell notification icon so you can get here before the scammers. Let's start the video. We're edging closer to that $2.1 trillion market cap. I did a poll on my YouTube about a week or two ago. You guys thought we'd only make it to around a $4 trillion market cap by the end of this bull market cycle. I think we're probably closer to a six, eight, maybe $10 trillion market cap, which will put Bitcoin somewhere in the multi-trillion dollar market caps. That's gonna get us to around $180,000 Bitcoin, somewhere around 200,000. Of course, let's get to 100,000 first and see how we progress from that point. But I definitely think a $55,000, $60,000 Bitcoin is going to play some effect in the future whether it's a multiple of this number or this is a support level come a bear market. So I think this has got a really big piece of the puzzle to play long term. Ethereum, we saw it hit a new all time high just yesterday or on the 12th of April, 2,199 US dollars, depending on which exchange you're on, of course. Binance heading up again, but it looks like it's just having a cool off now. Uh, it's only up around half a percent and it was a lot more earlier today. XRP on its trend again, and we've got a few more to look at, including Uniswap, which has pumped to new all-time highs, but now just taking a bit of a rest. Now, if you haven't done so already, go across to my Twitter, follow us over there. Let's get it to 10,000 followers. But this is where we post a lot of polls talking about the market. So Bitcoin breakout to new all-time high in the next 24 hours. Is it a fake out or a real breakout? Majority of you have said it's a real breakout. Let's see what happens, whether we can get those solid closes over the $61,500 level. Just because we punch through the high doesn't mean we're going to stay above there. Sometimes the market fades off and closes back in our accumulation zone. So just keep an eye on that as well. So that's why I'm saying come across Twitter, follow us over there, lots of updates. If you haven't already, we've got a new newsletter coming out this week. So it's free. All you got to do is put your name, email address, hit submit, join us over there free newsletter coming out to your email this week. Lots of juicy stuff on that one. All right, trends, Binance is up, Ethereum is up, Coinbase is up. We have the Coinbase IPO launching in about a day and a half's time from the time you see this video. So I think that is definitely playing into the market as well. Basically, I'm concerned with how this is gonna play out in the market. Essentially, it's very hotly watched if that's English at all, but everyone is watching this Coinbase IPO, especially in the crypto space and tech space. So if that happens to be a buy the rumor, sell the news, and obviously the news event is when the IPO is launched, let's see what happens with the major cryptos. Now it shouldn't affect it, but it is huge news and that generally plays a part in the overall crypto market. We know they're very wobbly when it comes to news. Fear and greed, 74, we are tracking it pretty well, just bouncing between the greed and the extreme greed, but in the 70s, so we're not overly greedy at this point. Coin market cal is a good one to watch this week. Binance trending, it's having its 15th BNB burn, so just be aware of that, especially with the BNB price skyrocketing so much, which is just something to be aware of, especially if we get a huge pump and a pullback. Berlin hard fork is tomorrow. Another big thing for Ethereum. So there's just so much news coming out all the time, all these massive events across massive projects and you just can't take your eyes off them. Quick cross to the news, Coinbase IPO, which we've already looked at. This is going to be big for the news this week. So expect more news to come out for Coinbase IPO. Nothing much else to say on this apart from let's see what the price is when it launches and whether we get a dip after the initial launch. That has shown in the past that 
after IPOs, you can often get a better price than what it was at IPO. So it's nothing that I'm investing in. Cryptocurrency is my main play for the foreseeable future, but I'm definitely going to be watching the Coinbase IPO. Another Bitcoin ETF is at the SEC's gate. MicroStrategies putting another uh, ETF on the table. They got a few here to look at as well. This is the eighth Bitcoin ETF. Obviously, many people believe we're going to see some sort of Bitcoin ETF accepted, approved by the end of 2021 at some point. At the end of the day, it's all speculation. We're just talking heads here on YouTube and wherever else you're seeing this news. No one knows except for the SEC. Binance launches tokenized stock trading starts with Tesla. Why wouldn't you start with Tesla? It's one of the most popular stocks that is traded by everyone. So of course, put it on your uh, on your platform. Now I've seen a few people talk about this already today and the competitor that I'm looking at to Binance also trades stocks. So let's look at that in a moment. IOTA, now I'm only covering this because we've looked at it before. Give us 15 seconds on here. IOTA price prediction, nine days until the biggest upgrade in IOTA's history. Huge news. I don't see much happening on the chart. That's the unfortunate case for a lot of these older projects. We've got IOTA here on the chart and we were looking at it back when it was around $1.30 to $1.50, currently at two bucks, so we're up, but everything else is stealing the spotlight. And during a bull market, that's hugely important is to have the spotlight on you. So you've got the energy of all the traders and the investors throwing their money your way. So it's not to say that IOTA is a bad project or it won't make it or you know, it won't do good things in the long term. But at the moment, it's not probably not sure for 100%, but just looking at it doesn't look like it's going to get those same gains as something new and shiny, things that, these projects that everyone loves the buzzwords for. Now, this could be a good thing in order to accumulate at the next bear market, providing we see some sort of spike uh, during this bull market to know that the project is still alive and there's stuff really going on with it. But that's about all I want to look at on IOTA at this point. Let's take a look at some of these other cryptos, which are the Binance killers. Now, I say that like this because, you know, that's the whole point of a lot of cryptocurrency, always looking for the next killer, makes for a good headline. It's all the SEO stuff. If you don't have that, people aren't going to search for it. You want it so that you can pump those prices. Everyone's here to make some money off those coins. Obviously, I can't pump these coins because they're in the billions of dollars. Unless you guys have billions, then we're in another, you know, another league of our own. Now, Hollow is not one of those projects. Sorry to get your hopes up. What I want to look at with Hollow is the chart. This is the chart that I want to avoid investing in. If it's shot up like this, the chances of it continuing get slimmer and slimmer as the price increases. Now, even if it did do that, from that point and it did exactly the same move and it doubled, I'm risking a lot for making a double. So this is what I want to avoid from Holo ch or the chart of Holochain. So it's a very similar pattern. It's what I want to avoid. So next ones don't have this pattern, fortunately, and Holochain's down about 45%. Now it used to be called Holochain. I don't know whether they just changed it to Holo, but back when I bought it, yeah, it was it was Holochain back then. Are they not one of those, but it has a very good wind up chart, which has seen a big pump. It's starting to accumulate. Ideally, you want to see a break above these highs. Aave is one to put, keep on the list. Now let's get to the, the killer, FTX. I brought up Holochain earlier because the chart pattern looks similar. We could be heading into that parabolic state, but for now, FTX is doing all right. I think there's still room to grow here and it is starting to get a lot riskier, so I'm going to continue to watch it. But I definitely believe that FTX or the FTT token has the potential to moon shot and get to some levels of Binance, especially with what they have growing and building in the background, their own ecosystem. They have tokenized stocks as well. They've had this for many, many months now. And so they're basically like the breeding ground. And they have partnerships or they have some workings with Binance as well. So it's not like they have to verse each other and one wins and one loses. But in this case, FTX definitely has the goods and they have a really good network and ecosystem building around them with projects like Solana and Radium and Serum, which we'll have a quick look at on the charts now. Serum is the decentralized exchange and Serum was co-founded by Sam, who is also the CEO of FTX. So you can see that if one's going to make it, the other one 
hopefully will make it as well. Or at least that's what I'm banking on, seeing as how good of a job Sam has already done with FTX, the centralized exchange. Now he's got Serum, which is the decentralized exchange. We're at seven bucks. You can see here we've had a nice rounding bottom. It has been accumulating a dollar to two dollars, and now we're sitting at around seven dollars. So if this is to take off, this is the next ecosystem that everyone rushes to because Solana is very fast and can do tens of thousands of transactions per second and it's working, why not? You know, people are going to rush across to this after they've finished on Binance and Cardano and Polkadot. Why not Solana, Solana be the next thing, the next big thing? So Serum is the de decentralized exchange on Solana. Then we have Radium. And Radium is the, or the AMM, so the Automated Market Maker and Liquidity Provider for Solana blockchain for the, Seri uh, for the Serum Decentralized Exchange. So it's built on Solana for the Serum Decentralized Exchange. So there's a few extra projects here which could stand to benefit if, of course, the big if, if we see the masses rush to these projects. Charting looks fine. We're, you know, from seven bucks now currently sitting at around ten, eleven dollars. So it hasn't gone crazy just yet. Now, of course, if we get a pullback on Bitcoin, then everything goes quiet and we just have to wait. That's that's the the real uh, case for the rest of the bull market. So basically, is time running out? I don't think so. I think these will be fine long term. But if we do get a significant pullback on Bitcoin, then of course we just have to wait. Taking a look at Binance, and yesterday we were looking at Binance around 520 as it had burst through the $500 level. It's just fallen short of the targets that we were looking at yesterday around the 200% and the 125% at around $660. It's hit just short of $640. So I'm looking at this as an area to take a good chunk off the table, considering I got a good entry at around $310, uh, $300 to $310 back just a couple of weeks ago. So I look at it like how pissed would I be if this came all the way back? And the reason why I'm looking at that is from the previous all time high, uh, Binance fell about 45%. If I do 45% again from here, leads me to about $340. So would I be more pissed at myself and not taking some profits off the table up here, even if it only fell to 400? Or would I be more pissed if I let it run and it hit six, seven, or well, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars? Uh, but obviously there's the risk that it does fall from here. Also looking at this sort of pattern and volume just gets me a little bit fearful, especially when others are so greedy. So that's what I'll be doing here on Binance. Now the other token to have a look at is Uni. So Uni just pushed to new all-time highs, big volume again, and we have not seen the push through any further onto a daily chart. Yeah, just not much, not much happening here. Obviously, I want to see it close above this level, so I'm still comfortable at this point for Uni. That's my look at Uni and Binance. Let's continue the path to one thousand dollars on BNB. Crazy that we can even say that, considering it was only eight bucks last March. The big one, which we've been looking at on the channel for a while now, which isn't related to Solana and FTT and everything else like that, but the graph. So just a quick update here: two and a half billion dollar market cap. The pattern still looking pretty reasonable, just a bit of a sideways accumulation at the moment. Obviously, we want to see some uh, lows hold, but I still like it as a consolidation. Now, the, the problem that a lot of people had with, with the graph is the circulating supply, very low compared to the total supply. I've done a little bit of digging, and we can see that, they, that all of the tokenomics are out there. This isn't hidden by anyone, and from the looks of it, there's a pretty long release schedule. And at the same time, there is tokens, the GRT token being burnt. And you can find that online as well through, uh, through Reddit and some of these uh, links that I have found over here when it comes to the graph. So everything is out there already that you can see the tokens being burnt. And so when the early adopters or the early investors uh, are able to start releasing their GRT tokens, there is a mixture of buying support, burning tokens, and basically a lot of use case for it at the moment. So looking at graph, especially moving forward, there was such a big hype about it last year. I still have a lot of faith that this project is going to go long, uh, a very long way from this point. After the bull market's over, all bets are off. During bull market, all bets are on. 
Let's move across to Trust. And I've got this. This is the Trust wallet which Binance bought back in 2018. Chart looks pretty good again. You might think this has shot up too much. Overall, I don't think so. 12 cents to somewhere around the 80 cents. Not too bad. Trust Wallet, uh, the platform was acquired by Binance in July of 2018 for an undisclosed sum. So the original uh, founder is still working on the project and is part of the Binance team. So all of that still checks out for me. And I think once people start to figure out they have a TWT token or if there is some sort of use case for it, then we'll probably see some good move from, uh, from Trust Wallet token. So this is just something that I'm eyeing off and I'm just mentioning it on the channel as well. You know, the, the story behind it seems pretty reasonable. One of those things just to watch and weigh up for yourself whether it is part of your own uh, portfolio or your own trades. Injective protocol, another one in the decentralized exchange space. I'm bringing all these up because if we get this big shift over as Bitcoin begins to moon again, then I think some of these smaller projects which had a decent run first up might be on the cards to swing around to have their cycle uh, relapse again. You know, we've gone up from our 75 cents to the top here at $16. Looks like we've had a bit of a, a sideways accumulation, $10 now sitting at somewhere around $14. This is another one to keep on the watch list, which is exactly what I'm doing here. It's pretty cool because it's only a uh, $200 million market cap, $227 million. And a lot of the other stuff out there at the moment is in the multi-billion dollars already. So just getting a 10x from this doesn't seem out of the question anymore, especially with uh, so many projects hitting the multi-billion dollar market cap. Now, I've got one more that I really want to have a look at here, and that is Ramp. So Ramp has got a staking vault launch coming out in a couple of days. Ramp is around the $200 million market cap as well, dead on $200 million, 80 cents, slowly climbing. These are all sort of cryptos which haven't had the massive booms. They've seen some booms, but not like the stuff that's gone 60x, 100x, and they have a reasonable use case as well. Of course, cryptocurrency, you guys should know by now if you've been in this for a few months, everything is complete speculation and basically just following the uh, following the market trends and human psychology and the emotions of people. What do they want next? And DeFi seems to be coming up on a lot of people's radars again. Ramp DeFi is a decentralized protocol that intends to boost DeFi adoption by allowing non-Ethereum users to stake tokens on ETH platforms. So it's the ramp to get the non-ETH stuff onto the ETH DeFi stuff. So it's basically just trying to bring more money into the system so that people can make more money, at least throughout the bull market until everything goes belly up and comes back the other way. And Ethereum users can also interact with the ramp protocol and increase their yield. So it works back the other way as well. So ramp, it's definitely something that's on my list as well. And you guys in Australia can get this on SwiftX and CoinSpot. So I have seen this one on there, but I've been buying it on Binance. All those links are in the description down below as well. All the official links if you are worried about getting scammed or fished out in the intrawebs out there. That's it for today's video in terms of all those coins that I've covered. Twitter, go follow us over there and drop your email address here, uh, jasonpazino.com. Join the email list over there. It's all for free. Coming out this week, lots of juicy stuff on that one. So yeah, just make sure you're on that and you'll get a copy of it. Twitter, I'll catch you guys over there or on Instagram. Links are all in the description down below. Otherwise, happy trading. Stay safe out there. All those links are down below. I'll catch all of you at the next video. Like, share, subscribe if I didn't say that already. Do it down below and I'll see you at the next one. Till then, have more fun to get more done.